Islamic vision of peace is of a society where education is the right and duty of every citizen, man and woman. The vision of Islam is to make every human being safe and secure. The love of humanity is essential for the vision of peace in Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillahi wa alhamdulillahi wa salatu wa salamu wa ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Speaker to address us today insha'Allah will be our beloved brother Sheikh Ammar Amonet and he will be addressing the topic the Islamic vision of peace. A quick background about the Sheikh before I do invite him to take to the podium. Brother Ammar Amonet is currently the Imam of the Islamic Center of Virginia. He previously studied in the University of Umul Qura in Mecca and also graduated from the Institute for Imams also in the blessed city of Mecca. He is involved in many Dawah projects throughout the USA and has been blessed to travel throughout various countries to spread the message of Islam. So I would like to invite our brother Amar Amonet to the podium to address us on the topic Islamic vision of peace. Brother Amar Amonet. Amonet. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala al Habib al Mustafa Muhammad ibn Abdullah wa ala alihi wa sahbi ajma'in. Peace and Allah's mercy be upon you. May Allah bless the Prophet Muhammad and grant peace to him. May Allah Almighty guide all of us to that which is pleasing unto him. What is Islam's vision of peace? And is peace an important attribute of Islam? This is a question a lot of people are asking today. A lot of people, if you told them Islam is on a quest for peace, they may have doubts. They may think that Islam wants warfare or violence. And so it's very important that we clarify Islam's vision for peace in the world today. And it is our responsibility as Muslims to represent that message to all of our neighbors and our fellow citizens. Many people today, I believe, when they talk about peace, They've come to this idea lately, almost as if peace were an afterthought, but it is not essential to their ideology or faith or their way of life. But Islam itself is a vision of peace. Unlike every religion that you may study, the name of Islam is given to us in the revelation of God Almighty in the Holy Quran. And the name Islam means seeking peace. We are Muslimun. That means we are people who are seeking peace with Allah. Islam or Istislam means seeking to live in peace with the creator of the universe in harmony with the divine laws that are the foundation of human existence. So Allah, God Almighty,
commands us in the Holy Quran, Udkhulu fi silmi kafa, enter into the peace treaty of Islam completely and wholeheartedly. So Islam is called silmu, which means a treaty of peace. So we as Muslims must surrender ourselves to our Creator and obey the provisions of our peace treaty. And we will be granted peace by Allah Almighty. And Allah told us in the final scripture, the Quran, that the reason for sending the prophets and messengers was to establish this vision of peace. In chapter 2 of the Holy Quran, verse 213, this is Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, كَانَ النَّاسُ أُمَّةً وَاهِدًا فَبَعْثَ اللَّهُ النَّبِيِّينَ مُبَشِّرِينَ وَمُنْذِرِينَ وَأَنزَلَ مَاهُمُ الْكِتَابَ بِالْحَقِّ لِيَحْكُمُ بَيْنَ النَّاسِ فِي مَخْتَلِفُوا فِيهِ All of humanity were originally on one religion. They were one nation. But they differed and disputed. So Allah, God Almighty, sent the prophets, the Nabi'een are the prophets of God. Mubashireen wa Mundireen, giving good news and warning to humanity. And he gave them and revealed to them the scripture in truth that they could judge between people whenever they have disputed with one another. In this verse, of the Quran, Allah is telling us why He sent the prophets and messengers, alayhim as salatu salam, peace and God's blessing be upon all of them. Why did He send the prophets? Why did He reveal the holy scriptures to those prophets? Allah sent prophets and messengers to every nation and every race because they had disputed and divided each other. Every nation fighting every other nation every tribe fighting its neighbor tribes, all of the human beings competing with one another, each one trying to harm the other so that they can succeed by bringing harm and violence between their fellow human beings. So Allah sent the prophets and messengers and revealed the scriptures containing the laws of wisdom that they can judge between people and settle the differences and disputes among humanity. So this is the universal vision of peace. That human beings are separated. They are quarreling, disputing. So Allah sent the prophets and revealed the scriptures to judge between them fairly to settle all disputes to bring peace and coexistence among humanity. And so the vision of Islam is a world in which people will peacefully coexist because they are following the universal principles that are the foundation of human civilization, which are the teachings of the prophets and messengers. Every ancient civilization, every civilization in the world has as its core principles and its foundation these teachings of the prophets whom God Almighty sent. But people have misinterpreted the message of the prophets and messengers, alayhim as salatu salam, peace and blessings be upon them. And so we continue dividing and continue disputing with one another. Finally, Allah Almighty looked down upon the earth and saw the corruption and violence and oppression throughout the earth between the different religions and different nationalities and different races. And as the Prophet said, Maqatahum, he despised what he saw. He despised their hatred and violence their wickedness and oppression. But Allah Almighty did not destroy them, but He sent to them the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, peace 
and blessings be upon him to unite humanity, to establish justice and fairness and peace throughout the world. So the goal and vision of Islam with the will of God is to one day unite the hearts of people of every nation and race, every color, in the love of God Almighty, living humbly, submitting themselves to the will of their Creator. So the vision of Islam is not that Muslims should be violent toward other people or oppress them or harm them in any way. But the vision of Islam is that Muslims will be a cause of peace throughout the world. Finally, Allah Almighty looked down upon the earth and saw the corruption and violence and oppression throughout the earth between the different religions and different nationalities and different races. And as the Prophet said, Maqatahum, he despised what he saw. He despised their hatred and violence, their wickedness and oppression. But Allah Almighty did not destroy them, but He sent to them the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, peace and blessings be upon him, to unite humanity, to establish justice and fairness and peace throughout the world. So the goal and vision of Islam with the will of God is to one day unite the hearts of people of every nation and race, every color, in the love of God Almighty, living humbly, submitting themselves to the will of their Creator. So the vision of Islam is not that Muslims should be violent toward other people, or oppress them, or harm them in any way. But the vision of Islam is that Muslims will be a cause of peace throughout the world. So the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Al-Muslimu man salim al-Muslimuna min lisanihi wa yadih wal mu'minu man aminuhu nas ala dima'ihim wa amwalihim. The true Muslim is the one from whose tongue and hand the Muslims are safe and secure. And the mu'min, the believer, is the one to whom the people will trust with their lives and with their property. And so the Muslim, the mu'min, the one living at peace with Allah, living at peace with God, having belief and faith in God Almighty, is a source of security and peace. He does not use his tongue to abuse people, revile them, curse them, lie to them. He does not use his hand to strike them or harm them or deprive them of what has been granted to them by God Almighty. And the true believer is the one that people will trust him with their money and with their lives. If we will be true Muslims, we will contribute to the safety and security and peace in our community and in our nations. And so this is the priority for Islam. This is the number one job for Muslims to bring peace and security throughout the world, to provide a safe and secure environment in which we may teach people about Islam. When we have peace and security and safety, we can have a beautiful conference such as this and we can gather together and learn together. But when there is violence and warfare, we are not able to do that. We cannot proclaim the message of Islam without peace and security. And for this reason, Allah established what we call the jihad, which is established by Allah for the sake of protecting and preserving the peace. And so Allah Almighty talked about it in the Holy Quran, chapter 22, verse 40. Surah Al-Hajj وَلَوْلَا دَفْعُ اللَّهِ النَّاسَ بَعْضُهُمْ بِبَعْضٍ لَهُدِمَتْ 
sawami'u wa bay'un wa masajid if not that god almighty checks some people through other people monasteries synagogues and mosques would be destroyed in this verse if you will look it up yourself you will see the context of this verse that the muslims had been driven out of their homes they lived in makkah at peace with their neighbors but because they were proclaiming the message of islam they were driven out into exile they were killed robbed and deprived of their lives and liberty but allah did not tell them go and wreak havoc and kill people but he told them the purpose of using military force the police force of the state is that allah uses some people that is the military force to protect other people and so if none of us will defend human rights human values given to us by god almighty then the churches and synagogues masajid the places of worship of the various religions will be destroyed so allah is telling us that the purpose of the jihad is to protect the human rights the rights of christians and jews and non-muslims as well as muslims laula daf allahi an nas ba'dhum bi ba'dhin lahudimat sawami'u wa bay'un wa masajid and so allah instituted as a last resort after people were killed and tortured and they were very patient and they endured and they were driven away from their homes he instituted the use of force under the legitimate government not under individual human beings taking the law into their own hands but the muslims were patient for years and years and years and they did not resist and did not defend themselves but allah legitimized the use of force only to protect the human rights of everyone so he didn't say lahudimat masajid that the mosques would be destroyed if it were not for the use of the force to protect them to protect against violent aggression but he said churches monasteries places of worship of christians and jews because those religions were there in makkah and in other parts of arabia as well as mosques so islam wants to protect the rights of every religious group to their places of worship their basic human rights the purpose of using legitimate force only at the hands of the state is to protect human rights so that people can worship their god to make the world a safe and secure place in which we could proclaim our message so we have the right to teach people and to talk about our religion by securing the rights of everybody within the society and so this force of jihad was not instituted for the motives of terrorism that innocent people should be killed or in fear of their lives but it was instituted to protect the innocent from the aggression of guilty wicked and evil aggressors some people think that muslims are not allowed to take the non-muslims as their friends they think the muslims are supposed to kill non-muslims or deprive them of their rights but this is not what the quran said it is true that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbade us in the quran from making an alliance with those evil people who deny human rights to our muslim brothers and so allah said la tattakhidu aduwi wa aduwakum awliya'a tulquna ilayhim bil mawadda وَقَدْ كَفَرُوا بِمَا جَاءَكُمْ مِنَ الْحَقِّ Do not take my enemy and your enemy as your protectors and allies, treating them with affection when they have rejected the truth revealed to you. يُخْرِجُونَ الرَّسُولَ وَإِيَّاكُمْ أَنْ تُؤْمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ رَبِّكُمْ 
they have driven you into exile, you and the messenger, only because you have believed in Allah, your Lord. Some people translate this word awliya as friends, but this does not mean friends in this case. It means those people with whom you have a, an alliance of mutual protection. And Allah specifically mentions, they're the people who drive you out of your homes into exile only because of your religion. They drove the Prophet out and the Sahaba out from their homes. But Allah did not allow that they should be abused and their rights should be denied. In every verse of the Quran, when Allah talks about using force, it immediately says thereafter that if they seek peace, you have to make peace with them. Only those violent aggressors should taste force. As Allah said in Surah Al Mumtahina, Asa Allahu an yaj'ala bainakum wa baina ladina adaytu minhum wadda. That Allah will make affection and love between you and those who you had taken as your enemies. So we must treat even those who we are opposed to. We must respect their rights and treat them decently, not terrorize them and treat them with cruelty because Allah will put muwadda, love and affection between you. He will guide them and open up their hearts so they will see that even in warfare, the Muslims are civilized, decent and full of mercy. And so Allah will open their hearts and guide them to Islam.